Traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Guys, as you're tuning in, be sure to hit that thumbs up. If you're a new viewer, consider subscribing to the channel. So today we're going to talk about how I epically fumbled the day, going from green to red. Green 1K, maybe twice, three times to red. Not good, not good at all. We fell victim to, fr to frustration. We also had our confidence shaken a little bit due to some lag on the side of the broker with our executions. Just not a great day overall for me. Definitely a day I could see myself walking away plus 1K. So not uh, happy at all. Disappointed. And so we'll make the adjustments for tomorrow. We had a nice couple of stocks today in KWE, uh, MLGO, and I believe the last one, DSY. This was the last one, DSY. Uh, this is the one that really got us. But in terms of giving back gains, KWE was the stock so uh remember our disclaimer let's just quickly talk about our disclaimer before we jump into it remember that day trading is risky business a lot of people are having a hard time out there so if you're new to the markets take it slow take it easy build experience build competence before sizing up remember the live streams and recaps are never a reason to copy trade it takes months more commonly years to become efficient Lastly, I do not invest for my subscribers. What that means is that I'll never message you first. I'll never message you randomly and try to start a conversation for no good reason. All right, be careful. A lot of fake accounts are out there. So let's jump into it. KWE, you know, for context, great pre-market move starting around 8.50 a.m. Pushed up nicely from about 41 cents all the way to 89 and then started consolidating and pulling back into the open. So right here, we were watching to see if this thing would move up and give us a bit of an uptrend. And boy, did it give a strong move. We had the opening surge. I did attempt to get long early around 79, but I thought I was in too soon. But the issue I had here, guys, was my order floating. My order was floating and it, it, it spooked me a little bit. You know, back in back when commissions first went to zero and even maybe about a year or two after that, Thinkorswim would sometimes have issues where our orders would sit and float for 5, 10, 15 minutes, an hour sometimes, and you just see your PL going up and down, especially if a stock is selling off and there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, I always tend to, to you know, be a little conservative on, on when these things are happening. And today it's not going to pay off because, you know, instead of getting back in where I saw the entry, I hesitated and this thing went without me. I could have been back in at 83, 80, 83 or 80, 83, 50, 84 which would have been a great entry. This thing started taking off. I don't know if I would have held the entire thing to 95 where the first halt was, but for sure getting long 83, 84, coming out around 90, 91, because we skipped in price uh, as this thing started to open up would have been great. So we didn't start off properly, but we did trade the dips fairly well. We caught some trades in here. We caught this bottoming wick. We got ourselves up to plus 1K. Got ourselves up nicely. This thing came back down again, 91, curled up. And, you know, we're doing a fairly good job still, you know, locking in despite missing the main move. But right here is where things kind of started slowing down a little bit. I believe we did give back a little here at 45. Yeah, we caught some good trades. Let's check 45. I think we gave back a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. KWE. 39 40 41 okay maybe i am mistaken 41 our last trade came at 41 before switching to dsy at 44 and 45 so okay maybe i'm mistaking mlgo where did i give back i gave back somewhere i thought it was in that area or it might have been it might have been in the consolidation. I gave back a few hundred bucks. But anyhow, you know, today was one of those days where we had a very quick burst of momentum and then everything slowed down. MLGO, this one we were able to capitalize. I think at best we were up about 750 in this move up. It was a little tricky to be honest, uh, but we were able to position ourselves. I think we did utilize a couple of limit orders on MLGO. Um and we, yeah, we, we did utilize a couple of limit orders. We did hit the ass sometimes getting in. We did hit the bid a few times getting in as well. Or rather getting out on the ask, getting in on the bids. Um, but all in all, MLGO, you know, it wasn't too bad. 
we, we got in and out quick and clean some nice smooth trades so this one went from 499 uh up to 535 from there 580 it dipped ripped back to six sold. i mean just just a, a pretty pretty quick move here the five minute chart is a lot cleaner if we look at this but yeah you know I, there i think there was a halt i can't remember exactly but it seems like there was a halt around 599 um did i trade the dip and rip i can't remember if i traded the dip and rip i don't think i traded the dip and rip on this one but yeah from 609 we had a pullback to 560 and then a move higher so if we look at the log you know let's see here we're in at 81 so i came right up where it was going to give break of six a nice quick 10 cent trade there another six cents watching it break of six i'm in so i saw it around 590 580 area 948 so right over here so this was after the dip right yeah yeah because i'm like i don't remember trading the dip and rip right here so this is why it's good to screen record so you, you can you know go back and remember everything yeah this is this looks pretty smooth you know we catch the entire move really all the way to 6 620 and right here we were a little too aggressive and i think i did tell myself okay we got to start easing off right here even this trade here you know we're being a little too aggressive for the break over 40 and i'm like okay let's ease off we're being too aggressive and then kw so kwe around 950 is where it seems like i might have given back let's double check on where 950 is so it looks like i tried to buy the dip i don't believe i gave back there but you know a lot of you guys might be saying man i thought relentless would have been up nicely here well guess what happened this is where i end the live stream like right here today was one of those days where i didn't eat breakfast um or more so around like 11 30 i think like right here somewhere here i ended the live stream around like 11 30. today is one of those days i didn't eat breakfast i usually almost like 95 percent of the times eat breakfast i you know i went went to get some breakfast didn't take long maybe five minutes of whipping up something and before you know it you know i, I came back but what i didn't do was a proper rotation and so this thing was moving i might have came back like right here like right here i, I must have came back but I didn't do a proper rotation. And I saw this thing mentioned in the chat, but you know, like I didn't think anything of it. The, pe the people weren't raving. So I didn't think anything of it. Came back later, saw it around here. And it's like, are you kidding me? So missed this entire sweet, sweet move. Sometimes you need to be here in the right place at the right time, right? If you're, if you're watching this area for the breakout, or even if you're just casually coming in here, and you happen to see this you position yourself for this beautiful flag this beautiful wedge and this thing continues to the upside it tried again but we hit the 200 ema and we did have a couple of topping wicks here and that was all it wrote and you know for me what happened is that after i saw this that's when fomo good old fomo got me fomo 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 so you know i zoomed out and i'm like okay maybe cup and handle and we did have a cup we did start to see maybe a bit of a handle right here but this is this is what i would call desperation was the stock uptrending yes but we weren't getting anything super smooth and obvious like we had here or in the first move of the day so i over traded right here i over traded this area here and gave back profits gave back the couple hundred the 260 300 or whatever it was that i had gave it all back right there you know hoping to get another a third move again into the late afternoon going up unacceptable not good got to make the adjustments frustration got me man you know it was one of those days i felt like it was a sweet green day and it wasn't and i gave into the, the temptation of coming back and over trading so you know it's it's this thing man it's always such a a, a tightrope walk because there are days you come back and you do so well and then there are other days where you come back and it's it's choppy you know and you end up giving back some more so you know it's it's day trading for us right it's not super linear it's not always guaranteed it's why when there, the opportunity is present and is obvious we got to do our best you know a stock like dsy 
I believe a few high fills got me initially. Then I noticed, okay, I need to wait patiently for more pullback entries. And that's exactly what I did. Got myself back to green. And then what really happened is that I sized up on this thing. I sized up. Let's see if we can put on the show trades here. Can't remember exactly the areas where I was going in. Well, let's zoom out. So I think I got red. I think I got red in this area trying to buy breakouts, right? And I got caught against the spreads. It looks like there's a bit of a bigger flush here. And so in this area, I was way more patient to, to buy the dips. And that's what I did in this portion going up. And then I decided to size up. And I sized up in this area, got blazed, got blazed right here in this area. And then on the consolidation, the five minute chart did look good. So I was thinking that we should see a red to green, right? We came up with high volume. We, you know, we did get a small topping wick, but the ball, the pullback wasn't bad. And so I bought this area too many times. I bought this area too many times and fell out of rhythm with what the plan was which was to wait patiently for the overextended dip and give it a chance. But, you know, that fear is what got me right here. Fear is what got me because I knew there's a chance this thing could break down like this, right? With a big, you know, just kind of like what we had here. I knew we could see big red candles. So I wasn't giving it a chance to really go against me. But as a result, I'm losing against the spread every time. Three cents, three cents, three cents, three cents, three cents. You know, 1,500 shares... Or 2,500 shares, it's either 75 or, or 45 bucks. And to lose that 5, 10 times right here, it adds up very quickly. And from green, from red, on, you know, and this, this right here is not bad because I'm, I'm figuring out the stock. I'm getting the approach to, okay, got it figured out if it wants to go again. Nice. To then kind of reverting back into over trading it, or let's just say not trading it properly. You know, this is not the one to be super active on. And, and you know, what, what really kept me getting back in is that it felt like the dip, sh the dip should bounce, right? But the time horizon, you know, what was this? About 9, 10 minutes, 12, let's say 12 minutes before we got the curl. And then even then, it still did a false breakout. So that was the disappointing part is that we came up. And got smacked back down. Over here we attempted to go long. But the issue that I had is, is the stock did not really separate to the upside in a strong enough move to give a proper pullback. So the trades that I tried here were just flat trades. We didn't, we didn't really get that proper dip. And when, when I did attempt to dip here, it was selling off. So I lost right here. And, you know, there's no way I should be attempting a dip with this type of candle. That, that's the truth right here. This candle was too weak. And I, I did not look at my five-minute chart soon enough to realize that I was tunnel vision. So if someone had asked me, hey, do you get tunnel vision? This is it right here. Got tunnel vision. This thing got rejected. With this, even on the one, because I'm still seeing the one. I didn't look at the five right away, but even at the one... I should not be taking the dip under this weak candlestick here. And that's, you know, why I kind of lost here. So between 11.07, let's just check 11.07 to see how much I lost on those candles. So in at 73, out at 70. In at 69, out at 65 and 60. In at 60, out at 60. I think there might have been one more loss before if i'm not mistaken okay okay maybe not but anyhow we still got caught here a couple times this is unnecessary losses once we start coming down the moment that candlestick ends up like how it did two minutes later i should not be getting back in that's the key right there v-i-s-y but yeah, now was the day, you know, when I checked my trader view, you know, at, at, in the live stream, I said, I think I made like, uh, I think I made like 
3k i made like 4500 and lost like 4600 40 like 5000 i lost like 5000 it doesn't seem a lot of people will say man it didn't seem that way a lot of a lot of money passes through these accounts these trading accounts it might not have seen that way but that's the reality is that a, a crap ton of cash passed through the account there was a lot of back and forth there was a lot of losing trades let's see if we go to detailed let's go to the tent filtered calendar detail win loss expectation we made 4700 and lost 5300 we made we made way more than enough money today the problem is how much we've lost that's the real problem today the amount of money we lost so we got to do a better job retaining our gains and our accuracy fell a crap ton throughout the day because we started off the first half of the day doing exceptionally well up 1k twice so right here is where we got to step it up right here so yeah tomorrow again um as mentioned we're going to be spinning the wheel I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I guess the real OGs will see. Spinning the wheel. And take a look at the size of this thing. I mean, just take a look at the size of this wheel, guys. Isn't this something else? <laughs> you know, before anybody starts saying anything, the reason why it's this big is because the diamond members had five times the entries but i mean this thing is huge we're going to be spinning the wheel soon to determine a winner for the uh trip to florida it's going to be a good time so for those of you who are interested in the classes you can check it out you know you can your name can and will be entered into the raffle uh you know to win a chance to come hang out with us so you know stay tuned stay locked in and you know let's keep let's keep let's keep at it right let's keep at it we're all caught up with the archives so you guys can check out all the archives tonight even if we might have missed any from a few weeks ago you guys can check in right we're gonna be spinning the wheel but this wheel looks insane man it doesn't look like a wheel anymore it looks like like a dirty washcloth at this point <laughs> but uh yeah so check out the classes guys merciless markets if you're if you're interested in getting started in day trading the full curriculum is here you guys can take a look at it we do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships uh weekly q and a's you'll have full access to us throughout the weeks the months the years and on top of that we also share our trading archive every day right there's low late low latency streaming in the discord there's also free access to the Discord throughout your membership. So you guys can utilize coupon code Miami for 40% off. So, and, and by the way, uh, Trader View. Um, okay, yeah, I think we're good. We're all caught up. So yeah, take care, guys. Stay safe, stay green. It's been a real trader. And I am, of course, signing out.